Pinocchio, Chapter 4. Hello, this is Natasha, and in this chapter, Pinocchio meets a talking cricket. Very little time did it take to get poor old Gebetto to prison. In the meantime, that rascal Pinocchio, free now from the clutches of the cabineer, was running wildly across fields and meadows, taking one shortcut after another towards home. In this wild flight, he leapt over brambles and bushes and across brooks and ponds, as if he were a goat or a hare chased by hounds. On reaching home, he found the house door half open. He slipped into the room, locked the door and threw himself on the floor, happy at his escape. But his happiness lasted only a short time. For just then, he heard someone saying, Cricky, cricky, cricky! Who is calling me? asked Pinocchio, greatly frightened. I am! Pinocchio turned and saw a large cricket crawling slowly up the wall. Tell me, Cricket, who are you? I am the talking cricket, and I have been living in this room for more than 100 years. Today, however, this room is mine, said the marionette. And if you wish to do me a favour, get out now and don't turn around even once. I refuse to leave this spot answered the cricket, until I have told you a great truth. Tell it then, and hurry. Woe to boys who refuse to obey their parents and run away from home. They will never be happy in this world, and when they are older, they will be very sorry for it. Sing on, cricket mine, as you please. What I know is that tomorrow at dawn, I leave this place forever. If I stay here, the same thing will happen to me, which happens to all the other boys and girls. They are sent to school, and whether they want to or not, they must study. As for me, let me tell you, I hate to study. It's much more fun, I think, to chase after butterflies climb trees and steal birds' nests. Poor little filly! Don't you know that if you go on like that, you will grow into a perfect donkey and that you'll be the laughing stock of everyone? Keep still, you ugly cricket! cried Pinocchio. But the cricket, who was a wise old philosopher, instead of being offended at Pinocchio's impudence, continued in the same tone. If you do not like going to school, why don't you at least turn a trade so that you can earn an honest living? Shall I tell you something? Asked Pinocchio, who was beginning to lose patience. Of all the trades in the world, there is only one that really suits me. And what can that be? That of eating, drinking, sleeping, playing, and wandering about from morning till night. Let me tell you for your own good, Pinocchio, said the talking cricket in his calm voice, that those who follow that trade always end up in the hospital or the prison. Careful, ugly cricket. If you make me angry, you'll be sorry. Oh, Pinocchio, I am sorry for you. Why? Because you're a marionette, and what is much worse, you have a wooden head. At these last words, Pinocchio jumped up in fury, took a hammer from the bench, and threw it with all his strength at the talking cricket. And that was chapter four of Pinocchio. It seems Pinocchio was not too happy with the talking cricket. It was very hot-tempered of Pinocchio to throw a hammer at the little cricket. 
you think you will grow up soon? Perhaps not just yet. And there will be more adventures from Pinocchio on StoryNori.com. So drop by soon. From me, Natasha. Bye-bye.